A player rising to the top of EU, finally breaking into the top 50 players among his region and looking to finally make some money off the game he genuinely loved. Which, as a 17 year old, must have been extremely exciting, seeing your dreams get closer and closer every single day. Until one Twitter post would shatter everything he worked for, Godly was the victim of Brawlhalla's biggest band wave following an 8 page document released by former player Daiku, calling out European pros for toxicity. Now, whether the ban was warranted or not had the community divided, some calling Daiku a snake and others thanking him for exposing the players. But regardless of opinions, the fact was, at just 17 years old, Godly's dream was put on hold for the next two years. And honestly, at that age, probably seemed like the end of the world, which is completely understandable. But it also had many questioning if he would quit the game entirely and move on, or wait it out until he could finally compete again. And on January 14th, 2022, Godly would post a picture of his unbanned account, but after two years of not being able to play, it begged the question, would he even be able to compete with the top talents? Well, on February 5th, 2022, that question would be answered, and well, the truth is, he exceeded everyone's expectations, winning the whole entire tournament and pocketing $6,000. It was safe to say he proved himself on his return to singles, but what about doubles? Arguably a more difficult game mode, especially when teams had essentially a two-year head start. But just like singles, he proved he wouldn't be forgotten that easily, placing in second during 2v2s and claiming another $1,500. Godly's foot was on the gas during his comeback Year, placing in first during the Omen Oasis Championship, the Steel Series Invitational, the Spring Championship, and the Summer Championship before taking a tiny stumble, placing second in the Autumn Championship. But that year, 2v2s went a little differently. After his great performance at the Winter Championship, he fell dramatically, missing top 8 entirely. But he quickly got back on his feet with his new teammate, placing first at the Spring Championship and second at the Summer Championship, leaving Godly's total at 36,000 American dollars in just his first first year back to competitive Brawlhalla, which shot him quickly into the top 50 richest players in the whole entire game. But the year hadn't even ended yet, the biggest tournament with the biggest prize pool was just around the corner, and he wanted to show why EU wasn't a region to joke about. And I'd say he did exactly that, although he didn't win, placing second in both game modes at the World Championship showed the kind of force he brought. Because remember, this was just his first year back compared to people's multiple. Of course, with the impressive placement, he left with a staggering 55000 dollars from just that tournament alone, bringing Godly's total earnings up to $91,000. But he didn't stop there, with competition rising and a target on his back, next year was looking difficult. But he didn't falter, starting off strong with a third place finish during the Winter Championship. Followed quickly by a first place finish in Springs, he was looking good. But all legends fall, and for Godly, that was Dreamhack Dallas and Dreamhack San Diego, where he failed to make top 8, but with the redeeming factor of placing third in twos. Dreamhack Valencia, on the other hand, was quite the opposite, as he came back swinging, placing first in ones, but only sixth in doubles. The Summer Championship was Godly's last tournament before his World Championship run, and as usual, he dominated singles, placing first again in a respectable third in doubles. And now he was back with another chance to get EU their first ever world championship. Considering his recent doubles performance compared to his singles, on top of coming in with a brand new partner, most people were more focused on how Godly would do in singles. But he did what he does best and showed everyone why he's such a beast by winning the world championship in 2v2s out of nowhere, giving EU their first ever world championship. Now, all he had to do was win singles, which was a lot easier said than done, as Godly placed third in singles, leaving his total earnings at an impressive $162,158 in his short but flourishing competitive career. But on a real note, what were Godly and Kaina doing in 1970? Zach Boomy I'm not even going to try his last name, is a man full of many achievements, starting his Brahalla journey when he was just 12 years old, and 8 years later still competing with the best in the world, which is a massive achievement in itself, and with almost a decade of dominance, he also stacked some goddamn paper. Brahalla's tournament scene started from humble beginnings with no more than $200 as a top prize and just under 100 people attending the venues. But Boomy didn't care about any of that, all he wanted to do was show people he was the absolute best at the game he loved. His journey would begin in 2016 when he entered the BCS 2v2 clan battle, which he placed fourth, pocketing himself a crisp $15. But for Boomy, that wasn't nearly enough, so no more than a month later, he signed himself up for Combo Breaker 2016, taking the next month to train as hard as he could to hopefully take home his first trophy. 
And he did, just not first place. Narrowly losing in grand finals, Boomy was so close to tasting victory for the first time, and he was hungry. But discipline would have to come first, as in BCS weeks 1 and 4, he found himself in the similar situation not being able to break through the grand finals. But things were about to change, as Boomy entered the Gravity Cancel Brawl Olympics and took home his first ever gold medal all at the ripe age of 12. And at this point, Boomy had already made himself $800, which for a 12 year old probably felt like a million. 2016 continued the same path. Boomy placed top three in almost every other tournament that year, including the first ever Brahalla World Championship, ending his first year of Brahalla Esports earning $4,000. And he would ride this momentum into 2017, adding another 10 gold medals to his name and becoming a world champion along with his teammate Remy. At this point, it was safe to say that this was Boomy's blow up year, with more people playing the game and almost tripling his first place finishes, Boomy finished the year claiming another $23,000. And looking ahead to 2018, that number was only looking to grow. But 2018 started a lot slower than expected, barely making top 12 in his first 5 tournaments of the season. But I guess every legend has a few losses because Boomy came back like nothing happened and started winning everything. He won the next 10 events in dominant fashion and found himself eyeing up the Brawlhalla World Championship trophy once again. But this this time would be harder than ever, as a new player named Sandstorm would enter his first ever LAN. To many, he was just a ranked demon who decided to finally travel to an in-person event, but he would show those same people he was years ahead of the competition, even Boomy, dropping him in game 5 and sending him home with only a third place prize. But all wasn't lost, Boomy still won 10 events, plus third place at BCX is nothing to scoff at proven by ending the year off with another $25,000. But the question was, how would Boomy beat Sandstorm? It was at this point in time when Sandstorm was practically unstoppable. So you know what they say, if you can't beat him, join him, and that's exactly what Boomy did. For 2019, Boomy and Sandstorm would become an unstoppable doubles team, winning 11 2v2 titles, including another world championship. But Boomy wasn't done with singles. He still put up incredible fights, winning first place at DreamHack Rotterdam in the winner championship. Towards the end of the year, it was becoming more clear that Boomy's full focus was on 2v2s, only making it to top 12 during his individual run at BCX. Regardless, this became Boomy's highest earning year, with a total of $55,000, so technically he was still in his prime. And 2020 proved that theory even more, as Boomy and Sandstorm would start off the year winning the first 4 2v2 tournaments, while Boomy was really only making it to top 8 in 1v1s. But then, the team hit a bump. With new dominant teams such as Cody, Travis, and Faison, they were losing quite often. More specifically, the next four doubles tournaments, but they weren't going to give up. The reality was, these teams were brand new and they had a massive target on their backs. So all they needed to do was lay low and practice against them, and as the next big 2v2 major rolled around, they showed how they could adapt by winning the Mammoth Cup which left another world championship in their way to round out this year. To nobody's surprise, Boomy and Sandstorm were back on top, crowning themselves the first back-to-back -back 2v2 world championship team. And 2021 went pretty much the same, winning majority of the 2v2 tournaments including another world championship, and Boomy even finding a little bit of traction in 1v1s, placing second at the summer championship and third at Parsec. 2022 started off normal, with Boomy being a wild card in singles but dominating doubles, until Sandstorm and announced his break from the game, which left Boomy completely teamless for the upcoming season. This was Boomy's biggest test yet. Could he prove himself without the best in the world as a teammate? The answer was clearly yes, because Boomy scrambled to find a fitting teammate and eventually landed on Snowy, and with very minimal practice, threw themselves into the Steel Series Invitational placing third, which wasn't up to Boomy's usual standards, but again, they just became a team, so the future was looking pretty bright, which became fact, because at the Spring Championship, Boomy and Snowy placed first, winning themselves $3,000 each. But the real question came with the World Championship. How would they do against international talent and the amount of pressure they had on themselves? Well, it turns out they were unfazed, winning another World Championship. And at this point, people started calling Boomy the best 2v2 player of all time. And I can't help but agree. The five time himself with three different partners, the facts speak for themselves. And finally, we get to the current year, which I won't lie has been a little rocky for Boomy. 
On the bright side though, Sandstorm returned to the game, meaning they started teaming again, but besides that, Boomy hasn't seen a top placement this year, but with his past resilience, I'm sure he's cooking something for next season. But for the time being, Boomy sits at $200,000 in earnings throughout his career, being the first person to ever claim over $100,000 from Burhalla alone, and the second person to claim over $200,000, I'm sure we'll see many more achievements in the future. Steven Sandstorm Myers started his competitive career in early 2017 right in between Boomy and Godly, but the difference being he saw dominance right out the gate. 2017 would spark his competitive drive starting out playing Super Smash Bros, but only after two tournaments, Sandstorm had his eyes set on a different game. And on April 21st, 2018, Sandstorm would compete in his first Brawlhalla Major, the Spring Championship. Although not instantly winning, placing top 12 during his first tournament was very impressive considering the nerves and pressure, but turning that loss into fuel, Sandstorm would continue entering every online tournament he could, trying to get better and better, consistently placing in top 8, but never breaking that barrier onto the podium. However, Sandstorm was looking for change, as he begged his parents to take him to his first ever LAN event, where there would be no external factors like lag to blame, he wanted to fight everyone on the most even playing field. And after some convincing, his parents caved and flew over to the 2018 Brahalo World Championship, an incredibly prestigious stage to start off his LAN experience, but he obviously wasn't phased at all. As he bursted through with a first place finish, surprising so many people as before this, Sandstorm was relatively unknown, but it wasn't only 1v1s, he also placed in third for 2v2s with his teammate Ethan, earning over $22,000 in a single weekend, skyrocketing Sandstorm from an unknown semi-pro to one of the best in the world. But 2019 was his year to show everyone that his world championship wasn't just a fluke, and what came next couldn't have been predicted by anyone. First off, Sandstorm would drop his teammate Ethan and decide to create a super team with the current rank 1 player, Boomy which would prove to be very smart as they went on to win 9 2v2 majors in 2019 alone. But again, Sandstorm's individual performance was being watched like never before, because he was going on one of the craziest streaks in Brawlhalla history, winning 11 1v1 tournaments including the World Championship, making him not only the 2-time, but technically the 3-time as he and Boomy won in 2v2s as well. Probably the craziest stat in this whole entire video, Sandstorm won literally 45% of of all the Brahalla prize money that year, meaning in one year he earned over $94,000. And to put it lightly, nothing new happened in 2020, winning 12 more Brahalla titles including the World Championship in both categories again, skyrocketing him to the first and in my opinion last 5 time world champion. And as expected with these crazy stats, the last 2 years had become the years of Sandstorm where everyone was basically fighting for second. His dominance was something people have never seen before. Before, but the real question was, how long would it last? Well, 2022 rolled around and it would evidently not be happening that year. Although some blunders like finally losing a 1v1 world championship, he still claimed the 2v2 title again and won 8 out of the 11 tournaments he entered, leaving Sandstorm sitting on a comfortable $200,000. 2022 rolled around and it started off pretty normally. Sandstorm placing third during the winter championship in both game modes wasn't the end of the world, but it was definitely the sign of burnout for Sandstorm, as after the tournament he tweeted that he would be taking an indefinite break from the game, stating the reason being for Brahalla's abysmal competitive state and the lack of lands. After all, it was the thing that got him hooked on Brahalla, and having that stripped away for many years due to COVID-19 inevitably stopped the passion. But this was nothing new, we see pros take breaks or even retire all the time, but for Sandstorm it was different. He changed how the game was played and pioneered one of the most popular legends and weapons, gathering hundreds of thousands of fans on the way, so without him, competitive didn't feel the same. I mean, when would we ever see a champion like him ever again? Well, it turns out just four months later, the champion himself would return, and the main reason being, you guessed it, the return of LAN, the thing that ties everything together brought everyone back. But how would Sandstorm stack up against the newest competition, especially considering his lack of practice? 
and while honestly not very well. Finding himself falling in 6th place was uncharacteristic, but considering all the factors, not many people were surprised. But as the year went on and his results didn't improve, people were starting to wonder would Sandstorm ever return to his former glory. 2023 being the most competitive year in Brawlhalla's history would be the answer to that question. Finally being able to fully focus on Brawlhalla with the shutdown of multiverses, Sandstorm had no excuses, and the year started off strong, placing second at Dreamhack San Diego, only barely losing to the former world champion gave a lot of people hope that he might be back. But then shockingly at Dreamhack Dallas he recorded his worst tournament placement to date, losing to Hardy MJ in the round of top 32, something nobody expected. But all that mattered was Sandstorm didn't give up, in fact he was grinding more than we've ever seen before, dropping hundreds of hours to try to rekindle what he previously built, and at Dreamhack Valencia he would take a baby step forward making it into top 8 at an international land. But it didn't stop there. During this year's Summer Championship, Sandstorm would taste victory for the first time in two years, giving a lot of people hope for his performance in the World Championship. And after a long break and lots of trials and tribulations, Sandstorm found himself in the top 5 of Brawlhalla's biggest World Championship to date. Meaning on the day of this recording, through all of Sandstorm's ups and downs, he can be crowned the richest Brawlhalla player ever, with $241,000 to his name. And although the World Championship didn't result in a miraculous comeback story, he showed massive improvements in such a short period of time which tells me this is merely the start of his comeback story.